Subarus are not like any other car. It's a car that ignites passion and creates a community like no other. But what is it about Subarus that has built a massive following of enthusiasts across the country? We're traveling to our Misubi spring opener where hundreds of like-minded enthusiasts have joined us from all over the state of Michigan to meet. From first time to long time owners to insane power builds, we're diving into the world of Subaru, revealing the passion, the camaraderie, and unwavering love that feels obsession over this legendary brand. Hi, my name is Max Schrager and I've owned over 50 Subarus over the years. Right now I have six daily driving Subarus in my garage that I drive in the winter and the summer. Starting with the red blob STI, there was a Spec C swap into a USDM RS chassis and I have a blue bug eye, um, which is a V7 STI swap into a US 02 WX chassis and a yellow SO2 swap uh, into a yellow 03 WX chassis. And then I also have a GC8, which is a straight stock version 3 STI and an 09 STI, which has a JDM STI engine swapped into it. Uh, I do all my own work on the cars from start to finish, restoring and parting out and whatnot. Um, so all the swaps I've done myself in my garage with my lift. What sets Subaru brand apart from other brands in my opinion is enthusiasts mostly and big meets like this where all these people come out and the camaraderie. Also working on them is a lot of fun. Pretty easy to work on them and get into them. That's what brings me back into Subarus is how fun they had to work on and all my friends who work on them with me. One of my more memorable Subarus I've had is my first one which was an O2 Blue Bug Eye WX. So I built this car kind of in relation to that because it kind of got ruined by salt. So this is a clean North Carolina shell that I bought recently. It's an 03 WX, but it's blue. And I fully swapped it to what I wanted that car to be in the past. I also used to race uh, this car. So I raced that car for seven years and it was a lot of fun. I had a lot of friends who raced with me. It was a good time. I don't think Subarus are as unreliable as people say. I think that a lot of people abuse them and they can take quite a bit of abuse, but there's always a limit. So that's the problem. <laughs> if they're built right, then I think they work really well. Subaru reliability seems to be a never-ending debate. Ringland failure, blown head gaskets, you name it. But it's not impossible to make a high-powered EJ. So just how far can you push it? Hey, I'm Sean. This is my 2016 Subaru STI, crystal white pearl, tuned by Corbin Johnson, and it makes 734. The car started off as uh, just plans of bolt-ons. As soon as I hit break-in, the journey kind of began from there. TGV deletes, uh, full exhaust, and I did the uh, BCP X500 turbo. Unfortunately, lost cylinder four at 430 horse to the wheels. Decided I wanted more power, did the IAG closed deck block, and then uh, decided to try out BCP's X500 Plus. Uh, between Corbin and I, we kind of assumed the car would make somewhere around 500, which I was going to be happy with. After the build, we got that turbo done, and the uh, car unfortunately didn't make anything more than it did before because the heads were outflowing the turbo, so the turbo couldn't keep up. From there, the suggestion was to go rotated, so that's where we ended here. Uh, it's a stage five CNC head package, Kelford 220C cams, uh, precision 6466 turbo, pushing 42 pounds of boost. It's got a uh, radium dual fuel pump hanger. It's got two 450 LPH pumps. IEG has got their fuel rails. The uh, injectors are ID 2000s. It's all custom fabricated from Jeremy Howell at Fat House Fabrications. It's got a uh, tile 44 mil wastegate. It's running the tile Q blow off valve. Did everything myself. I didn't take it to a shop. I did everything out of my garage. So jack stands, a lot of time on my back. Funny story, uh, one of the biggest problems we had with the car was losing fuel pressure. It's actually a story my tuner still talks about today. We spent weeks diagnosing an issue, pulling the fuel pump, replacing the fuel pump, everything from top to bottom. Turns out the brand new fuel pressure regulator had a single strand from the braided fuel line trapped between the ball seat and it was preventing the uh, regulator from closing. So weeks and weeks of diagnose, diagnostics turned into a single braided strand inside my fuel pressure regulator. And uh, that was probably one of the biggest challenges was finding that one issue. Advice to anybody that's looking to do a build like this or any kind of modifications to their Subaru, I would say definitely talk to your community. The Michigan Subaru group here in Michigan is awesome and the guys here are extremely helpful, but take your time, plan things out, set a power goal, talk to your tuner, make sure parts or what he wants to tune and go from there. Driving a Subaru at this power level, extremely fun. The smile factor is there every time, pins you in the seat. Um, it's the fastest Subaru I've ever driven and I love it. But for some, it's their first time getting into the Subaru platform. What would make them want to buy a Subaru in the first place besides the obvious rabbit hole of car modification? I'm Max Soros and this is my 2016 Jet Black Metallic WRX. So I started pretty much against Subarus really. I've, I've had everything but them. I've had GTIs, I've had STs, but I've grown up around Taylor and Ian for a ton of years and I've always been surrounded by Subarus because of them. They've just kind of inspired me. I mean, they always bragged about the great community and meets like this. I loved how their car sounded. I was jealous of their all-wheel drive in the winter. So when it came time to, to kick my ST to the curb, 
and this popped up, I, I kind of just had to say yes, and I've, I've been loving it ever since. It's gonna sound really childish, but one of my favorite things is the hood scoop. I just, I love a big hood scoop. I've, something that I've noticed ever since I was a little kid. I mean, you always knew that a Subaru was coming. One, because you heard it, and two, because there was a big old hood scoop in the front, and I just, I love that about my car. Um, I love that it's a manual. I'm, I'm a big manual guy. I, I like how engaging it feels. I love the all-wheel drive, too. I mean, while the car might be a little heavier than the cars I've owned in the past, I, you just can't beat it, and it just gives you so much confidence that you have never had before. And I like the styling of the car, honestly. I think the, the VAWRXs are a pretty handsome-looking car. Um, I like the angles, and I like the wide fenders in the front. I think it looks really nice, and it's, it's ready for mods, is how I feel about it. So right now, I'm pretty much 100% stock, except I have a, a Cobb off-the-shelf Stage 1 tune. But there's a couple things I really want to do to the car. I kind of want to go full bolt-on, pretty much, so do a, a verticooler from Process West, do a Cobb intake, do a catted J-pipe of some sort, a cat-back exhaust. I might have Adam from AKD weld me up a custom exhaust. Who knows? Sounds really tempting. Uh, I'm looking at Swift Springs, do some wheels and tires, hopefully Potenzas, something like that, Mach-V Crucials for the wheels, add a couple JDM bits on the outside, just keep it clean and simple. That's kind of how my cars have been in the past. Well, I started out in different car communities with my GTI and my ST and even other car communities. If you're into like Mustangs, Corvettes, Camaros, everybody seems kind of aggressive with each other. They're not very welcoming of people's different tastes. Uh, they're very critical of what people do with their cars. And it's just been something that I was jealous about in the past because I, I heard my friends talking about, you know, how great this community is and how everybody's kind of like a family. So now joining and especially at this meet, it's really nice to see everybody's different tastes reflected in their cars, people being kind to one another about them, talking to one, one another. And it just feels like one really big happy family and it feels like I'm home. So I think if you want to buy a Subaru, it's definitely something that you should pursue. I think it's important to find the right Subaru because they can be in all kinds of different conditions depending on the year. And I think it's really important to kind of know what you're getting into before you start. And I would say just do it because I've been suppressing that for a couple years and I, I think I'm filled with a little bit of regret today that I wasn't in this earlier. So I would say 100%, uh, no matter what kind of Subaru it is, you're definitely not gonna re regret that purchase. And I think you're gonna thank yourself every day that you made that switch.